Hi MTG Line fans. So at the very end we will have a new playmat artwork of Philia, Oath of Philia, so that's kind of exciting. But I'm gonna talk about something a lot of you wanted me to talk about. TCG players announcement and their response to buyouts. First of all, I wanna say that I'm very surprised they announced this, mainly because it's in their benefit that buyouts happen because then panic ensues and more people buy cards and then the cards go up at higher prices. They take a percentage. So when a card is purchased and then repurchased, uh, they actually get quite a bit of money. So this is definitely good on them because it, at least initially, it would seem that this goes against their interest of selling cards at the highest amount they can sell it for. But at the same time, the long-term goal is always community, 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 and that's, I think they understand it. Not every store does, and definitely not every player gets it, but they got it. If the community is strong, then they will build itself and support itself, and we need to prevent MTG Finance, this type of buyout from happening. I like the plan. I'm going to go over the plan and why it's actually going to prevent buyouts in the future or help prevent. It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, phase one is to relaunch the website with uh, different pricing data. And then over the next six weeks, they will create a new, new tool. And in the remainder of the year, they'll work on the API. So we'll go over each of these and how that's going to help. Essentially, what happens is the median price, when a buyout happens and there's not much supply, it just spikes. That's not the true price because the true price is what someone paid for it or what you can get for it, right? So at the end of the day, I like the concept they're going with and hopefully it works. Uh, they, I know they've definitely been trying out market pricing and that's something they've been interested in doing. So I like the I like the concept of market price. I just don't know if it's going to work initially. It might take some data and people buying cards and then eventually it'll fix, but the concept is solid. Now the median price is now listed median, so it's less confusing. Listed median is essentially the price, so that price might go up and up and up, but at the end of the day, um, if no one's buying the card, buying Mo for $600, and they use Mo as an example, and I felt that was amazing because that was a direct reference to MTG Finance and direct reference to a buyout. It will prevent the person from buying the Mo from selling it immediately, and they will have to sit on it. I find that very difficult to believe that's their end goal. Um, it would be like a store instead of selling magic cards, they just held on to everything. Eventually it would go belly up no matter how valuable those cards became because the value is not going to outright. You need cash flow, right? So if you're gonna put 20 or 40 or $60,000 and it's literally gonna take you five years to do it, that would dissuade people from buying out cards. So Moat, the median is $654, double what the actual sales are selling showing so no one's actually buying moat for that price although people are getting greedy and you can see the greed and I, that's why i love about it. you can see which stores are greedy and don't buy from them if what people are buying for is half the price and a store is charging 654 dollars do you really want to do business with that store i get it but if the price, the market price, the actual price is $354 and store is asking for $650, that is not, in my opinion, a good store. And I would not buy from it because they're just greedy. It's so greedy. So partially you have MTG investors, but partially it's also the stores being extremely greedy or whoever it is listing at that price. It's kind of a deuce move, to be honest with you. Now, the one thing I would love is the buy list market price because the buy list market price is always generally lower than the pre-purchase, pre-spike price because they don't adjust that fast and storage will have to consider you know, is the card actually worth that. And a lot of times when I make uh, decisions, I allow the stores to make those decisions for me because I don't want to make them at the end of the day. 
um, I shouldn't, you know, the store has way more data and whose customers are. And Mo is a very good example of a card that is, it's good as a sideboard card, but not $650 good. No one's buying at $650. So TCG players should not avoid, they should avoid that price at all cost. And this will prevent buyouts. I'm surprised and shocked that they did this, but good, good for them.